Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and House of the Dragon is the Game of Thrones prequel series based on George R. R. Martin's novel from 2018, Fire and Blood. And we have a new teaser for this 10 episode series coming in spring 2022 on HBO Max. And even though New Rockstars has shifted to covering pretty much everything Marvel in the recent years, boy oh boy is it great to be back talking Thrones. Since this was a show I started New Rockstars videos with all the way back in 2016, all the way to the bitter, bitter end. But of the many spinoffs that were announced this was the one I was most excited for because Fire and Blood is a great story and based on everything I've seen so far about this series the production design the cast it's gonna be fantastic I'm gonna react to this teaser do my best to explain all the characters how they're related to each other what the story is gonna be all about explain how this all connects to what we know from the A Song of Ice and Fire timeline and what I'm most looking forward to about the series so let's take a look and here we How did they get the HBO title just float there? Mm. Looks like we're on Dragonstone. Okay. Interesting they call it the Fall of the Throne. It's like from their point of view. Okay. Otto Hightower, I'm guessing. Viserys the first. Fire. Okay. And blood. Back to incest. Ooh, the armor looks great! Oh, there's so much! Wait, is that the... Holy crap. Dreams didn't make us kings. <gasps> oh, it looks so much better! I love that they're going with an older design of the throne. Are they just pretending like the new throne didn't happen and they're doing a redesign? Or are they saying, like, it, it changed? I have so many questions, I have so many ideas. I'm super excited for this. Okay, so just to give an overview of the characters and how they're related, we got King Viserys I Targaryen. He's one of the Viseruses that Daenerys' brother was named after. He's technically Daenerys and Viserys' great, 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 great grandfather. I, I think that's eight greats, basically 10 generations previous. He's married to Alicent Hightower, who ends up leading one faction of the Dance of the Dragons. That's a Targaryen civil war that this series is gonna show the events leading up to. The rival to that faction will be Viserys' firstborn child, Rhaenyra Targaryen, and her incestuous relationship with Matt Smith playing Daemon Targaryen, who is Viserys' younger brother, technically Rhaenyra's uncle. Rhaenyra later goes on to lead the faction called the Blacks. So we got the Greens versus the Blacks. Before hooking up with Daemon, Rhaenyra's first husband was this other family that we're seeing in this house, Valerion. They lead an island called Driftmark that's just to the southwest of Dragonstone, the seat of the house Targaryen. Their sigil is the Seahorse. They're led by Lord Corlys Valerion, known as the Sea Snake. He's one of the best seafarers of Westeros. His son is Lanor Valerion, who, spoiler warning, does end up dying early, which allows Rhaenyra to remarry to Daemon. And then everyone else kind of revolves around this central cast. But thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Get mouthwatering seasonal recipes and fresh pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh makes cooking at home fun, easy, and affordable. It's fall and HelloFresh has some great fall flavors mix and match in the HelloFresh market with sweets and beverages like ready-to-bake pumpkin cinnamon rolls and spiced lattes. I have come to really love cooking and I just love how HelloFresh helps you save time and stress. You can get some tasty home-cooked food on the table in just 20 minutes with their quick and easy options. HelloFresh has more five-star reviews than any other meal kit so you know you'll be getting something delicious in every delivery. Last night I made a chicken sausage spaghetti bolognese. Mamma mia was it good. I'm a big boy. Boy, making big boy food. Pastada. Tada. Got it. So go to HelloFresh.com and use the code ROCKSTARS14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. So just kind of reacting to what we see here, it looks like we see Damon in Dragonstone bearing a torch going down through the tunnels. Damon and Rhaenyra looking out on the water from the coast of Dragonstone. We get this awesome shot of the skull of Valerian the back dread with all these candles in front of him like a vigil. I love that we're seeing Valerian this way because remember in the Game of Thrones timeline after Robert Baratheon sacked the 
Iron Throne, all of these skulls were previously just kept in the Red Keep, put on display as a show of power to anyone who might greet the Targaryen king on the throne. But Robert Baratheon, hating the Targaryens, moved all of the dragon skulls out of the Red Keep and put them beneath it in the dungeons, which is where we saw it in episodes of Game of Thrones. But here they have all these candles surrounding them as if they're kind of these religious icons that the Targaryens still have this immense respect for. But it's also almost like a stupid magic trick. Like they put these candles in front of them as a way of showing like these things can still breathe fire. Generations after this, the dragons would go extinct and these skeletons and skulls and displays would really be all they have. There's a close-up shot of someone wearing the Hand of the King pin. This is actually Otto Hightower, who's Alicent's father. He ends up being a political rival to Matt Smith as Prince Damon. And we see briefly the king who he serves, King Viserys I. He's got his Targaryen ring and he's holding a specific sword. This is an important sword called Blackfire. This is the original Valyrian steel sword of House Targaryen that belonged to Aegon the Conqueror, who created this whole dynasty. And this sword was passed down to each king thereafter, but up until what was called the Blackfire Rebellion, which would be about 60 years after these events, when the sword was lost. And again, this guy is married to Alicent Hightower, Otto's daughter. Together, they have a bunch of kids, the eldest of which is Aegon the Second Targaryen, whom in this Dance of Dragons Civil War, the Greens want to carry on the line of succession. But a lot of this drama comes from the fact that Rhaenyra was passed over due to the paternalistic laws of succession and the way this all works. And we're gonna be jumping around to different times of Rhaenyra's life, including seeing her as a younger woman. And we're gonna learn that she has a relationship with Sir Harold Westerling. He's a member of the King's Guard who is tasked with watching over her and protecting her. I love all these shots of the candles being blown out as a way of showing that the power of House Targaryen is really starting to wane. This is really the beginning of the end of the family. Up until this point, their rule was unquestioned, but this is the first time the family started to turn against each other, which led to the Dance of Dragons and then a whole bunch of Blackfire rebellions in the generations after that, which really eroded the power of the family generation after generation until the point where Robert Baratheon was able to sack it. And even then, he was only able to do that because the Lannisters turned against him last minute. We get a quick shot of this melee between these awesomely armored soldiers. This one must be Daemon Targaryen because you can tell from the sword that he's holding, this is the Dark Sister. It previously belonged to his father, Balon Targaryen. This is the first time we've seen Targaryen armor in live action like this. They have this awesome dragon winged helmet. The armor in this style was described when Rhaegar fought Robert Baratheon, but here they have this almost Spartan style armor. It's just an interesting way of showing how all of this is taking place 200 years earlier before the events that we saw. So it makes sense that this would be more of a Roman aesthetic as opposed to the later medieval styles that we saw in Game of Thrones. We see Lord Corlys in the House of Valerion greeting them at this banquet. The reason they have this blonde hair is they have Targaryen blood. They are kind of related with the Targaryens themselves. You can see in the background of this banquet that's the Iron Throne there with the sigils of House Targaryen on the left, House of Valerion on the right, that's a seahorse. I assume this is a wedding banquet celebrating the marriage of Rhaenyra, the daughter, to Laenar Valerion, a marriage that does not last long again. So we're talk about this dark-haired woman. This is Maseria, who's a woman from Essos who became Daemon's basically mistress of whispers, most trusted ally, kind of like what Varys was for a lot of the monarchs. And then my favorite shot from this trailer, we see Alicent Hightower. She's with the red hair and she's wearing green, right? So she leads the greens faction of the Civil War. She is carrying this dagger and you should recognize this dagger. This is the same Valyrian steel dagger that we saw throughout Game of Thrones. First is the cat's paw weapon that was used to attack Bran and Winterfell that we later learn had this whole backstory with Littlefinger and with Tyrion. It's basically what Littlefinger used to try to frame Tyrion, but really it was Joffrey who ordered that hit. And of course it was later given by Bran to Arya. Arya used it to execute Littlefinger and then of course to kill the Night King. But here they're saying this dagger was the same one that was part of this very interesting conflict between the families. So basically the backstory here is Alicent had a few kids, one of whom was a 10 year old named Aemond. And when Laenor died, his father, King Viserys, told him that he could get a dragon egg because he was the only one of his siblings who had not had his own dragon yet. So he snuck near the dragon and then was caught by his three-year-old nephew, Joffrey, who was part of the Valerians, and he pushed Joffrey into dragon poop and then hijacked the dragon and went on a joy ride, which led to this whole fight with Joffrey's older brothers. And Aemon basically insulted them by calling them strongs, essentially calling them bastards. And then Joffrey's older brother, Lucerys, was pissed off and then used a dagger to cut out his right eye. And then Alicent, 
the mom of Amon was so pissed off, she demanded Lucerus to lose an eye as penance for that. And it all came out that Amon called them strongs. So it was this huge insult to the family, basically calling them illegitimate. But King Viserys prevented his wife, Alicent, from taking this penance. It's very similar, thematically at least, to the events in the Riverlands in the Game of Thrones series. The fight between Joffrey and Arya that later led to the Dire Wolf's death. A spat among children representing this broader hatred between the sides of the families. It's kind of like that show The Slap. I think everything in life is like the show The Slap. But the fact that they are making it the same dagger that was so important to Game of Thrones is just kind of an interesting thing of making this one dagger such a cursed weapon that has been responsible for so much bloodshed and the unraveling of the political power of Westeros, but also later something that saves Westeros against the Night King. Anyway, we get some cool jousting shots. They pass a bunch of banners that might look familiar. I see House Stark, that might be House Bolton. It's held at the Tarleys, and it looks like a rider for House Tarley fighting a rider of House Cole that looks like the nine black dots. And then lastly, this epic shot of the Iron Throne. Now, in Game of Thrones, it was, for production reasons, a simpler throne, but just like a cool sword look to it. But really, the design of the books is supposed to be a big, giant, nasty nest of swords that's really, really tall. It takes a bunch of steps to get up to it. And with this show, it looks like they're kind of meeting halfway between the two designs. You have the sword in the background, but this kind a nest of swords surrounding it. I don't know if they're gonna pretend that the old design never happened. I think with that dagger, they're pretty intent on trying to link as much as they can to the original HBO series. So I think instead what we might see are these swords melted down or stripped away from it to eventually evolve this throne into the throne that we saw in Game of Thrones. Also interesting to note that the windows of the Red Keep do not yet have the seven-pointed star of the Faith of the Seven. And that's because this is long before Baylor the Blessed basically built the Sept in King's Landing and really established Established the faith as the official religion, Baylor the Blessed would have been Damon's grandson. But the last thing I noticed is this great music from Ramin Jawadi, who's coming back to compose the series. One of the reasons I'm most excited for it. They have a vocal version of the Fire and Blood House Targaryen theme music. I'm just most excited for this because they're keeping a lot of the aesthetic stuff that I loved about the Game of Thrones series and this show, some amazing production design, set design, costuming, music, while hopefully having a bit of a narrative reset. And because we're further back in history, we know how everything ends, so we can just kind of take our time unfolding the narrative and showing the political drama between the characters, as opposed to what we saw in Game of Thrones, where they were trying to basically extrapolate from what George R. R. Martin intends to end the books with, while letting go of some of the more interesting storylines and just trying to rush the ending. I'm hoping we don't see that here. There's no rush. Take your time with it. Well, once this show comes to HBO Max, we're going to be covering it episode by episode, hopefully bringing back some after shows. It's going to be an exciting time. So if you haven't already, subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of this and everything that you love. And you can support us by checking out our merch options at newrockstarsmerch.com. I assume we'll have some Westeros-inspired designs. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow and subscribe to New Rockstars. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>